Hello everyone, my name is Caden Smotley, and today I'm going to be giving you all a presentation about some of the work at the University of Nevada Reno's Advanced Robotic and Automation Lab, or our lab. This project was significantly contributed to by Sun Niugen, An Fun, Caden Smotley, and Han La. This is a presentation of the paper the R Lab team submitted to the International Conference of Robotics and Automation for 2020. Our paper has been published by the conference and can be found by searching for the title of our paper, A Practical Climbing Robot for Steel Bridge Inspection. This presentation is going to discuss the motivations for this project and those like it, some of the current works within the field of robotic steel bridge inspection, the particular design elements which went into the R Labs robot and analyses performed for it, and finally, the results from deployment tests with the proposed and constructed robot being presented. In the United States, there are over half a million bridges in total, and the average age of the United States bridge is 45 years old. Of these bridges, approximately 200,000 of them are steel bridges. Roughly 45,000 of these steel bridges are considered to be in poor condition by the Federal Highway Administration, which is partially tasked with performing inspections of the nation's bridges. As a result of America's aging infrastructure, degradation of bridges is beginning to take a toll on the thousands of bridges across the nation. This means that bridge failures and inspections occur or are needed more frequently. Since the 1970s, the United States has spent around $55 billion on inspections alone. Since 1950, 54 bridges have collapsed. This has caused the death of around 100 people and the injury of approximately another 1,000 people. In an effort to reduce the long-term costs of performing inspections, robotic solutions are being created to improve the efficiency and detail at which inspections can be performed. Additionally, inspectors who conduct inspections on steel bridges are consistently exposed to extremely hazardous work environments, which results in a high level of safety protocol to ensure that accidents are minimized. These protocols extend the lengths of time required to perform inspections on an already largely time-consuming task. Since inspectors are required to work in such potentially hazardous environments, there is a high degree of skill and training required to become an inspector. These two factors create difficulties and barriers of entry for those wishing to enter this job market, effectively hindering the job market supply of inspectors. Therefore, robotic implementations which are capable of traversing these bridges are highly desirable and that they entirely reduce the risk of human life and increase inspection efficiency and level of detail. Current works within the industry branch throughout a wide variety of viable solutions. Of these solutions, there are two major groups, aerial robots and mobile robots. Of the current works which exist, there appear to be three primary goals for the mobile robots within the robotics to bridge inspection field. That these robots are capable of carrying sensing equipment, able to localize themselves and the data they collect, and that these robots are able to traverse the many complex geometries which exist along the steel surfaces found on steel bridges. To the left are some of the more recent implementations of mobile robots within the field. Many of these robots tend to be biologically inspired. On the left are two examples of aerial implementations. These methods typically are only able to gather visual data and are not able to utilize some of the more detailed equipment inspectors use to perform their inspections. On the right, some implementations of steel inspection robots for other purposes than steel bridges. These robots are often used for steel silos and other instances of steel being used in structures. Mobile robots are tasked with being able to traverse some relatively complex geometries efficiently out in the field. Some of these shapes include cylindrical surfaces, long continuous surfaces, and small obstacles such as bolts, nuts, cracks, and gaps. Oftentimes, these challenges occur in close proximity to one another, which serves to increase the intensity of the challenges in traversing these areas. The RLAB robot that was proposed and created in our work is capable of traversing these areas with its multifaceted design. The major aspects of the robot are as follows. It has tank-like feet, which enable the robot to adhere to surfaces and travel along and between them. It generates its adhesion force with permanent magnets and can travel along continuous flat and cylindrical surfaces. It is capable to carry small equipment loads for various sensors and data collection equipment, and can travel between beams of any angle. The Aura robot has two primary modes of traveling, 
It's mobile mode, which means that the robot will be traveling similar to that of a tank, and it's transforming mode, which allows it to travel similar to an inchworm. Diagrams for each mode of travel can be found on the top left and bottom left of this slide. The position changes which occur in the robot as it transforms between two surfaces is shown on the bottom left as well. This mode of articulation has six degrees of freedom and enables the robot to travel into a wide range of potential new surfaces. The feet of our robot consist of an upper and lower plate. The upper plate is required to support the robot when it is in transforming mode. It houses two encoders for localization purposes and is equipped with two servos that are used for modifying the height at which the lower plate is resting at. The lower plate allows the robot to adhere to a wide range of surfaces and travel over small obstacles with its dynamic permanent magnet array, which can be raised and lowered with the servos on the upper plate. The mechanical design of our robot started with a statics analysis of it when it is transforming. We needed to perform this analysis in order to determine how much torque output would be required from each of the servos of the robot as it is stretched outward. This analysis allowed the RLAB team to mathematically identify the major role the mass of the robot's feet would play in its capabilities for the robot's transforming mode. And finally, we were able to reduce, we were able to determine how much of a moment the fixed foot on the left would experience when the robot is extended in this manner. Next, the team performed an analysis on the plates of the feet. The team determined that the lower plate would experience the largest forces and therefore should be used to determine the degree of thickness that the team would need in carbon fiber plates to make the design sturdy and capable of withstanding forces and moments. This analysis was done with the use of finite element analysis using SOLIDWORKS. After this, the team was able to perform a set of analyses for the feet of the robot. This started with a turnover analysis, which expanded on the content we obtained from the transforming analysis discussed in the last slide. This analysis allowed the RLAB team to discern what the maximum moment the foot was capable of withstanding. We used this analysis to develop the geometric requirements of the feet to be able to withstand the forces from the transforming analysis. Next was a sliding force analysis. This analysis was based on the net adhesion force the robot's feet have and the center of mass of the robot. This analysis allowed the team to determine how much weight the feet were capable of holding before slipping would occur between the fixed foot and the surface it is adhered to. Finally, an analysis was done on the robot's lead screws to determine how much torque output was required from our servos in order to raise and lower the lower plate of the foot. This requirement is primarily based on the raw adhesion strength of the foot's magnets. Once the team had finished designing, manufacturing, and building the discussed robot, we performed a set of field tests to verify our robot's capabilities. Here, we tested our robot inside. Then we took it outside onto a steel statue on campus. And finally, we tested the robot on a bridge on campus that has cylindrical members. Here, a video shows some of the uh, the tests that we did and the results live. So there you saw the robot moving forward. Uh, and here in a moment, if you look here, you'll see the lower plate array raising as lowering as it prepares to enter transforming mode. Here, the robot prepares to adhere or to attach to a new surface. Once the robot has done this successfully, it will begin to transfer to the new surface entirely. Here, you can see a detailed close-up of the lower plate raising and lowering. Here is our verification test of our turnover analysis. And here is the results from our testing on the outdoor statue on campus.
as you can see here, it's getting ready to adhere to the surface. So in conclusion, the University of Nevada Reno's Advanced Robotic and Automation Lab has designed, manufactured, and constructed a robot that is capable of climbing on various steel structure shapes in order to perform inspection. A robot that is capable of traveling in two distinct manners, like a tank or like an intruder. This allows our robot to travel around more complex geometries than some other modern day current works. Our robot is also able to efficiently travel along continuous flat and cylindrical surfaces in mobile mode and can travel over small obstacles like nuts, bolts, cracks, and gaps. This research project was funded through the country's National Science Foundation and the United States of America's Department of Transportation. Thank you for your continued support. And thank you to all of our viewers. If you have any questions or would like more details on the project, please read our detailed paper titled, A Practical Climbing Robot for Steel Bridge Inspection. If you still have questions, please reach out to one of us from the lab, the University of Nevada Reno's Advanced Robotic and Automation Lab. I hope that each of you learned something new and that you all have a great rest of the day.